At the beginning of the film, the events unfold at Wakefield Prison, where a transfer vehicle arrives carrying a group of new prisoners. Upon their arrival, the prison guards stop the vehicle and ask the driver to return one of the old prisoners who is seriously injured. At this time, one of the new prisoners, named Henry, observes what is happening and notices that the old prisoner is severely wounded. Through his observation, Henry realizes that this prisoner works in the prison. As the new prisoners enter the building, the guards take them to a barber to have their hair cut. When it's Henry's turn, the barber is given money to cut his hair the way he wants. Afterward, the prisoners are directed to the room where they will sleep. Henry notices that an old prisoner named Woody is taking money from the prisoners in exchange for giving them good sleeping spots, while those who do not pay are forced to sleep on the floor with just a blanket. At the same time, a group of prisoners is gathered in a room with a TV and a pool table. They are the ones responsible for maintaining order inside the prison. The highest ranking prisoner among them is named Jimmy, who talks to another prisoner responsible for torturing others, named Eddie. Jimmy asks Eddie to teach the new prisoners the prison rules. Eddie then goes to an old prisoner named Bobby and beats him in front of the new prisoners to scare them and make them realize that those who do not follow orders will be dealt with in the same way. The next day, the prisoners are taken out to work on repairing and cultivating the land surrounding the prison. Henry watches a prisoner named Bullin arguing with another prisoner, but the guards do not intervene because Bullin is a prisoner in charge of certain matters inside the prison. He is allowed to beat the other prisoner with the guard's approval. After work, the prisoners return to the prison to eat. Henry notices that some prisoners are selling clean food, different from the prison food. However, when he tries to buy a meal, he finds that Bullin has taken the last one leaving Henry no choice but to eat the regular prison food. However, after seeing insects in the food, he is disgusted and does not eat. After some time, Henry starts working in the prison's wood factory with other prisoners, which is run by a man named Paolo. While they are working, Jimmy enters and takes Henry and a group of prisoners outside with him. When Paolo protests and asks Jimmy to leave the prisoners to finish their work, Jimmy tells him that he needs them for other tasks as the rest of the prisoners are busy elsewhere. At this moment, Henry realizes that the prisoners are being rented out to factory owners for work, and the guards take the money in exchange for that. Later, Henry works in the execution room inside the prison and hears a prisoner named Walter screaming as Walter grabs Bullin by the neck and threatens the guards. Walter demands that his request be met and that he be treated with respect. Henry goes to talk to him telling him that he is the new warden and that he will meet his demands if he releases Bullin. Walter releases him, although he is not convinced by Henry's words since the latter is wearing prisoner clothes. Henry explains that he was wearing prisoner clothes to deceive the guards. After releasing Bullin, Walter is tricked and locked up again. Henry then heads to the warden's office and tells him that he is the new warden who has come to replace him. Henry presents all the documents proving his identity as the new warden, which convinces the old warden, and he collects his belongings and leaves the prison. The next day, Henry gathers the prisoners and tells them that there will be no more torture, but anyone who tries to escape will be killed. He also informs them that the injustice and corruption that were happening in the prison will no longer continue. One day, a committee from the prison administration arrives to discuss the prison's management with Henry, and they tell him that they will contact him in a week to follow up on the progress. Meanwhile, Henry speaks with the former deputy warden, Renfro, and asks him about the injured prisoner. Renfro tells him that the prisoner was transferred to the prison hospital. Henry requests sunglasses for the prisoners who had been held in dark cells so they can adjust to the light when they are released. Later, Henry sits with Boleyn and reads his file, discovering that Boleyn had a twin brother who died in a railway accident. Boleyn tells Henry that the same people who killed his brother are the ones who got him into prison. Henry offers Boleyn the responsibility of managing the prison's car yard. Boleyn is surprised by this offer because he had been one of the old guards in the prison. In the end, Henry sits with the former warden to gather information about the prison lands and the crops they produce and is shocked to learn that the land yields good crops, despite the prisoners being hungry. Later, Henry receives a phone call and is surprised to find it is from Combs. Combs informs him that the roof of the prisoner's room has collapsed due to the strong storm. 
Henry immediately rushes to the scene, discovering that the roof had fallen on a large number of prisoners, causing serious injuries. Henry personally helps the injured prisoners, pulling them out from under the wooden debris. Afterward, Henry calls the prison administration to request an ambulance, but they tell him that it will arrive in an hour. Frustrated, Henry hangs up the phone and tries to treat the injured prisoners himself. He notices that the prison doctor is not interested in treating the injured and even gets angry with them. As a result, Henry fires the doctor and appoints the doctor's assistant, Zoraska, to take care of the injured until another doctor arrives. As time passes, Henry begins inspecting the prison storage rooms and discovers that the food storage is empty. He asks Renfro about the food shipment that arrived a week ago, but Renfro doesn't know where it went. He suggests that the prisoners in charge may have consumed the food. Later, Henry enters his office to find Paolo sitting in his chair. Paolo informs him that Renfro called him to repair the collapsed roof and asks Henry to sign papers related to the repair costs. Henry refuses to sign and tells Paolo that he is obligated to repair the roof at no cost because he is responsible for the defects that caused the collapse. Paolo agrees on the condition that the prisoners return to work in his factory, but Henry rejects the offer and expels him. Later, Lillian calls Henry and is shocked to learn about the extent of the corruption that was happening in the prison. She decides to help him solve the problems and contacts the administration to provide the necessary resources to fix the prison. Over time, Henry notices that the prison is starting to change, with the prisoners now eating clean food and Henry himself eating the same food with the prisoners. However, Combs expresses his discontent with the changes and refuses to eat the food. The next day, Henry goes out to inspect the prison's agricultural lands, accompanied by Renfro and Combs. They notice a strange car in the area, so Henry follows it in his car to find out who is driving it. Along the way, he sees an injured animal and realizes that the person in the car is responsible. Enraged, Henry begins chasing the car, later discovering a cabin filled with boxes of food. Henry realizes that this food was meant for the prisoners, but was sold to traitors instead. Henry then speaks with Boreal, who tells him that someone has been signing papers on his behalf. Furious, Henry expels him. He then summons the prisoners to retrieve the food boxes and bring them back to the prison. After some time, Henry decides to hold elections among the prisoners to choose individuals they trust to be responsible for managing the prison and solving its problems. Later, Lillian visits the prison and informs Henry that the governor will be visiting soon. Henry asks her to convince the administration to allocate a budget to rebuild the collapsed roof and hire a new doctor to replace the one he fired. Lillian promises to discuss these issues with the administration and attend the next meeting to raise his concerns. The next day, Henry organizes a recreational day for the prisoners in the yard where they form teams and play horse games, cheered on by spectators. Henry expresses his happiness at seeing the prisoners laugh for the first time in such a way. When election day arrives, all the prisoners participate in voting to choose their representatives. After the elections, Henry notices that the elected prisoners are unable to manage things on their own, so he meets with them to explain that they are now responsible for the prison and must bear the responsibility. At the same time, a prisoner named Abraham tries to meet with Henry to talk about something important, but the guards tell him to come back later because Henry is busy. Abraham insists on meeting Henry and enters the meeting. He tells Henry that he wants to clear his conscience and feels anxious. Henry holds Abraham's hand and takes him to the office. Henry notices that Abraham's eye is injured and asks him about it. Abraham explains that he was tortured for years in the prison, which led to the injury. When Henry examines Abraham's file, he discovers that Abraham's prison sentence ended three and a half years ago, but Abraham was unaware of this because he had lost his sense of time. Abraham recounts to Henry the stories of prisoners who died and were buried on the prison grounds. He tells him that he was responsible for making the coffins in which they were buried and points out the location where the bodies are buried. Henry is shocked by this revelation. After that, Henry begins preparing to attend the administrative meeting. At the same time, he contemplates how to release Abraham from prison since his sentence has already ended. However, Combs opposes this, as he doesn't want Abraham to leave the prison, believing that Abraham won't be able to adjust to life outside. 
Combs tries to convince Henry to let Abraham continue living in the prison with them. That same night, Eddie and Renfro deceive Abraham by telling him that the doctor needs him. But when Abraham goes with them, he discovers that Jimmy is waiting for him. Jimmy connects an electric wire to Abraham's body and tortures him with electricity until he dies. Meanwhile, Henry is in a meeting with the prison administration requesting a budget to rebuild the collapsed roof. However, the administration rejects his request, considering that Henry is handling the prisoners in the wrong way. They see the prisoners as criminals who should be treated harshly, while Henry believes that the prisoners have already been punished by incarceration and that ultimately they are human beings. Henry becomes furious and storms out of the meeting. Lillian follows him and tries to calm him down, pointing out that he can't change the world or fix everything in the prison on his own. The next morning, Henry wakes up to find a body hanging from a pole outside his room. As he approaches to examine the body, he discovers that it is Abraham's corpse. Enraged, Henry heads to his office, where he finds the electric torture device used to kill Abraham on his desk. He orders Renfro to investigate and find out why the guard in the watchtower didn't report the incident. Combs is deeply saddened by Abraham's death and blames Henry for what happened. Later, Henry takes the prisoners and begins digging in the place Abraham indicated before his death. During the digging, Henry receives a call from Lillian, who informs him that someone has tipped her off about the digging. She urges him to focus on the living prisoners and forget about the digging, mentioning that the prison is one of the most important to the administration because it contributes to agriculture and generates significant revenue. The director of the prison administration appears and speaks with Henry, telling him that the digging operation he is conducting is considered a crime and threatens to dismiss him from his position if he doesn't stop. The director leaves, and Henry returns to the prisoners to tell them to stop digging. However, he notices something unusual underground, which makes him suspect that the bodies he is looking for might be buried there. He orders his men to stop digging in the other spot and start digging in this location. After hours of digging, they find the first coffin and continue digging throughout the night to extract the coffins. At this moment, Jimmy appears, visibly frightened, and we discover that he is responsible for killing the prisoners and burying them, as well as stealing the food and selling it to traders. Jimmy tries to talk with the responsible prisoners to find a solution to the problem he has gotten himself into, but Combs is furious with him for killing Abraham. He wants to strike him, but restrains himself to avoid further trouble. The next day, Henry asks the doctor to examine the bodies to determine the cause of death. At the same time, Bobby enters and informs them that a car has fled from the prison and that Jimmy was aboard. Bullion predicts that Jimmy has gone to hide with Carl, the restaurant owner's partner, and suggests going to search for him there. Henry agrees and takes Bullion and two other prisoners to the restaurant. When they arrive at the restaurant, the owner denies knowing anything about Jimmy. However, Henry notices a door inside the restaurant and discovers that it leads to Carl's house. He opens the door to search for Jimmy and asks Bullion to stand by the other door to prevent Jimmy from escaping. At that moment, Jimmy is hiding with a gun in hand, trying to escape through the door where Bullion is standing. But when he exits, he is surprised to find Bullion in front of him. Jimmy points the gun at Bullion and shoots him. At the same moment, Henry comes from behind Jimmy and shoots him, killing him. Henry rushes to try and save Bullion, but he finds that Bullion has already died. Sometime later, the prison administration holds a meeting to decide to remove Henry from his position and appoint a new warden who will follow their instructions. When Henry enters the meeting to speak with them, he is immediately dismissed. Lillian follows him once again, trying to convince him that she supports him but cannot help him because of her job. Henry, however, dismisses her words, considering her as corrupt as the rest of the administration. He leaves the prison to pack his belongings. At the same time, the new warden arrives at the prison and speaks with the prisoners about the new system that will be implemented. While Henry is preparing to leave the prison, he meets Combs, who tells him that although he didn't like him at first, he later realized that Henry was right. Henry smiles at him and prepares to get into his car. Combs claps deliberately to attract the attention of the prisoners. In the end, the prisoners notice Henry and leave the new warden, heading toward Henry to greet him and applaud as he gets into his car and leaves the prison, ready to start a new life away from everything that happened in the prison.
If you want interesting movie recaps, like, share, and subscribe to follow us for more movie recaps.